So I've opened up our tentacle again here. And now let's just start to go through and kind of clean up a bit of these things. So I want to start just at the very beginning with the main input here, which will be our primary curve. Again, I'm going to delete that. I keep forgetting that. But so to drive the primary curve, we already said that we're using clusters to do this. Now, one thing that is a bit nasty about that is that when we start to graph it, what we actually end up with is a massive graph of just uh, deformer after deformer after deformer after deformer after deformer. And it's just very unnecessary to be able to drive this shape. Also, it's just, I don't, I don't like having a bunch of deformers here just to kind of do these simple things. And as we looked, we can actually, instead of the deformers, we can just connect the position of these locators directly into our shape. Now, that's pretty much what we'll do. So I'll just go here and, oops, sorry. So what I'll do first off, I just delete history on it just to clear out those clusters. So when we now go and see our cluster group, we basically just have a bunch of empty trans transforms. So I'm just going to delete that. We don't need it. Of course now, nothing's happening so let's fix that a quick note first is that if you haven't noticed anytime that you make um, a curve you will usually have a cv another cv and this will be like evenly spaced but at the beginning and the end you will have these almost like tangents so we'll need to take in those into account as well and that's basically what i've done with these extra controls underneath the e and a control so I'm just going to add in all of these. I'll select them. I'll do uh, just press uh, down on my keyboard to get the shapes. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the world position of the locator shape. If you don't know, you can actually get the world position of a locator from the shape. It's a special thing it has. So no matter where we, what kind of like local values you have on your transform or where it's placed in the world, you can always um, connect the world space position of that. So we'll get in our curve as well. I'll get the shape for that. And I will just connect up. Let's just organize this. So we want to do A, we're going to do the tangent A, then we want to do B, C, D, E, and the tangent. Okay, so let's see now when we move these locators. And it's working again. So now we managed to clear up all those locators and we just have a nice clean curve here as well. So let's kind of continue down the road here. So let's just see what happens after the primary curve. So I'm just going to graph this uh, by just one set of time and we don't need that. So what happens right after is we've got the blend shape. So, oh, sorry. I'll just do that a couple of times so that we can see what happens in that way. So we can see that basically we get into uh, that Maya node editor tab. I really don't like that. So what's really happening here is We've got our primary curve that goes into that blend shape that we was talking about so that we can drive the primary curve. And the main purpose of the primary curve, sorry, the rebuild curve was to have this rebuild node so that we get nice even spacing when we do our calculations. And then from the rebuild curve, we're going into our motion path nodes. So actually to me, this seems like, you know, as long as you don't need your blend shape, 
to be actual like turning on or like going 50% of the blend, we can just take this world space right into this. And then from this, we can bypass this shape completely and go right into our motion paths and into our curve info and all of this. That way we can basically just get rid of our uh, rebuild curve completely. So I'll just go around and connect up those things now. So just a quick note here as well. Note that on the motion path nodes, you need to connect into the geometry path while on the curve info, it's on the input curve. So we can now see that the primary rebuild doesn't have any more outputs. Let's just double check that. Yeah, it only has to the blend shape and tweak set, which is fine. We don't care about those because we will be deleting the curve anyway. So let's just select it and get rid of it and see if things are still working. And they are awesome. So really starting to kind of clean up now and just really focus down on the main things that the rig needs to do. So let's keep going here a bit now and see what else we can fix up here. So if we just graph this now, so we have our primary curve, which then now goes into our blend shape. So that's still kicking around. So I'm just going to delete the blend shape just so that we get rid of that. So that we can now see what we have is we've got our primary curve going straight into this rebuild curve node and then it goes into our motion path and then it goes into our locators and then these parent constraint to drive the joints and honestly we don't need these these are extra calculations and things that we don't really need to and especially if you're dealing with something like a rope or tentacle rig you want to have a lot of joints. If you if you need to skin it, you need a lot of joints to make it look really nice. I've just got 10 here and you can already see it's not very nice all the time with um, sticking to the shape and sometimes just losing volume and things like that. In addition to this, um, the, especially if you're dealing with tentacles, then especially if you're doing like an octopus, you're going to have eight of them, right? And then each individual node extra, like extra calculation that you do is going to be times by eight, which can start to really slow down your things. So let's just go and get rid of these. So what I'm going to do first is I'll just get rid of the uh, parent constraints on our joints here. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to loop through all of these locators here. I'll get these connections that we have and I'll just connect them straight into the joints. Because I've made my locators and my joints exactly with like J and J joint, I can just do that very quickly. So I've actually already just kind of written up some code here to loop through and do that. Um, one thing to kind of note out is to make sure that anytime you're doing stuff like this uh, through code, I would always just select something disconnect it and then undo that because if you do that you're basically going to get the exact um, attribute names that you need so that's basically how i found that this um, the all coordinates is spelled like this and that it's using rotate because i just disconnected and then i can see motion path 10 all coordinates from this one so i can just go through that so just a quick overview in this um, this code here is that I've just used PyMel. So if you were to do the same thing, you might have to do import pymel.core as PM. So first I'm just listing all of these locators. I know that the only thing that changes is this last uh, character. And then I use that to just loop through the locators and I'm just taking the fifth, like from the end, 
which I know is this character here. So I can I can just show that if I print this uh, joint name, you can see that it will be A B C D E F G. So I then just create a pi node out of that. I use the locator. I get the translate. I get the connections from the translate to get the motion node. So if I just do that. You can see that this basically outputs each individual motion path node. And then because of what I did in the beginning, I know exactly what I need to go through here. Um, so I can just then connect all coordinates into the translate of the joint and I can connect the rotate into the rotate of the joint. So if I just run this now, we should now see that we have each of the joints has a connection. And if we jump back to the node editor, we can also see that here, that our motion path is going now both into the locators and the joints. And let's just double check that it's actually working. That's still working. And let's just delete all of our locators. Nothing bad really happened. And our rig is still working fine. So. That's a basically a kind of a rundown of how I would try to think of a lot of things, especially it's not always needed, but if you, the more you can kind of do this, the, I think just the cleaner your rigs can be. And for sure, I'm not always going to do this. A lot of times I will just do exactly how the rig was in the beginning, just because it will be easier to do. It will be quicker to get up and running. But if you need to go into actually optimizing and cleaning up your rig, um, there's going to be a lot of things that you can help with this. I think the, the key thing here as well to understand is to really think about the connection that was going from that primary curve. And, you know, just the, just the, the passing through of data here, because normally, right, you'd expect to have the motion path attached to a curve, but it's not really a attached to a curve in, in the, in the normal sense, right? We just take this, re we rebuild the data as we need, and then we pass it in here. That just eliminates the need of kind of having like a new curve that we do this rebuild on, or it just allows you to manipulate the data through this, um, through this graph a lot more, because what you could do is you could do a lot more things of, um, if you want to split the curve or if you wanted to do something else, like a, another node operation that happens on the curve shape, you could still keep that in here and you wouldn't have to like have a bunch of curves here. And trust me, as soon as you do things like this, um, you, you can end up with like a lot of duplicated curves just to uh, do these different operations. And just being able to kind of like streamline that a bit, I think is very nice. So you can see now what we've gone from is, you know, we still have the same controls. We still have the same models, but we've oh, well, almost so we've gotten rid of the curves, but we've gotten rid of at least like one of the curves. We have gotten rid of the fixed locators group and we got rid of that cluster group as well. So for me, this is just a lot cleaner. And also if somebody were to pick this up and say, you know, they take this joint and wonder what's actually happening here. They could take that joint and graph it, and you're going to get this very nice, clean graph. Uh, if I just put that to infinite, sorry. Uh, I'll just clean, do that back, right? This is very kind of simple to view now, instead of that like big monstrosity that we had, just because of most of it was really down to because we used the clusters in the beginning instead of this. So now we just have like one kind of input where we control that shape of the curve. Then we rebuild it. There's no need to um, go through and um, put that onto a new curve. And then we get the curve info, we do that calculation, and we put that into the motion path, and we're done.